I know I said I was going to try to do this marathon in a series of videos that would cover several films at once. In this particular case, I woke up this morning and I was like, you know what? I need to get this video while it's fresh in my mind. Uh, today is Wednesday the 14th and I watched The Human Centipede 1 and 2 yesterday and they've I need to get this out while it's still fresh is basically where I'm going with this whole thing. Now, you may be a little surprised at how I rate these, um, but I would also say that this is why you read a reviewer's review or watch what they say and don't just look at their scores, okay? And the reason for that is there is nuance to things. Now, when I look at the scores on Letterboxd for these, the first one has a 2.0 and the second one has a 1.8. The scores that I'm going to give these movies are going to be far different than that. I think these are very well-made movies. I really can't disagree with those scores. My scores are going to be different, but I have a little different criteria. And that's, again, that's why you watch what somebody says about something or read what they say about it. Because there's more to things than just the number, if that makes sense. And I know we all know that, but this is one of those times that I think the score is going to be much different than the actual, like, I don't recommend these, but the scores that I'm going to give these are going to be far different than what these scores are. So let's dive in. The first human center, these are both directed by Tom Six. And uh, the guy's definitely got, I don't want to say issues, but he's definitely got an imagination. Let's say that. So you're, I'm sure you've seen stuff about the human centipede. South Park roasted the thing, you know, with the kids all diapered together and stuff. Um, I know I've seen, I, I don't really watch a whole lot of South Park, but I know I've seen that at least in images or if not a clip or the whole episode. I, I don't remember, but uh, I know I've seen this before. I know I've seen a lot of people make fun of this. I actually thought the first human centipede was a, I'm going to say good movie, but I don't mean good as in, Hey man, I want to watch this tomorrow again. I mean, it was good as in the cinematography was, that was well shot. It had a nice color to it. The, um, the acting was well done. People took this seriously uh, the main character, Dieter Laser, I think did a tremendous job as the doctor. He, he took his part seriously. It was definitely over the top, but with subject matter like this, you really need to either go stupid campy, like thanks killing or something like that. Or you need to go like this, which is taking it completely seriously and having somebody that's just so over the top, uh, I think they took this as a very, very over the top um, idea. If I was to compare the doctor in this movie to someone else, I would say Willem Dafoe could probably have played this part because his part in Antichrist was, was good. And Antichrist is just as disturbing as this movie uh, for a lot of reasons. And I thought Antichrist was a very hard watch. And a lot of people give Antichrist some credit where they don't give this one credit. And I don't really understand the difference because to me, Antichrist and the Human Centipede are kind of along the same lines. Not necessarily as story-wise, but as just far as the brutality and the subject matter that you just don't want to see. So I don't really get the disconnect in the scores on these. For me, I gave the first Human Centipede three out of five. I thought it was a very competently told story. It was a well done movie. The uh, characters and the acting and everything was was spot on for what this is. I know a lot of people don't like the disturbing content, or maybe they found it boring or something. But for me, I thought this was a the uh, three out of five stars is pretty much my middle of the road. I didn't find this poorly made so it's not like a one star it it's definitely not exceptional so it's not anything above a three star 
this is not a movie I will ever watch again. I took no pleasure in watching this, honestly. It was better than I had anticipated. I will say that. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that I liked this. That I, you know, especially giving it a three star. It doesn't mean I actually liked the movie, the content. I can appreciate what was done and how it was done. I just, this is not my kind of movie though. But I don't see scoring it low because of that. You know what I mean? Like I can see that it, there's five star movies that I've watched that I've given three three and a half, four stars to, because it just wasn't my kind of movie. I can see where other people would like the five star movies, you know, something really good, like a gone with the wind or something. Those aren't my movies. This is nothing like that. Absolutely nothing like that. But in the same vein that I don't get those getting five stars, I don't get this getting, uh, that's at two stars. Um, Again, this was kind of a difficult watch. I mean, it's just not my thing. So I gave this one three out of five stars. And like I said, I am not going to be revisiting the first one or the, uh, any of these, really. Um, I watched them. I got through them. And I kind of, I don't want to say I'm glad I watched this because I'm really not. But at the same time, it's not like the worst movie I've ever watched. I mean, I the, I watched that other hunk of shit the other day, that Night Terror movie. That was far worse than this ever was. That far more deserves a bad score than this does. But at the same time, I understand why this gets a bad score. If, that may, if any of this makes sense. Uh, is the movie bad? No. It's just not good. <laughs> And it's very difficult to wrap words to that. And if you've seen this movie, you totally understand why. Uh, if you haven't seen this movie, I don't recommend watching it. It's just not... This is one of those things I don't think is made for human consumption. It's just not made for... It, it's not entertaining. It's not fun. It's a very difficult watch. And you just feel dirty the entire time you're watching it. Uh, when I got done with Cannibal Holocaust, I was, I felt grimy and nasty and dirty, but I wanted to see it again because I could appreciate that it was a good film. I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it insofar as the story and the way it was told and the way everything was. I mean, it's a brutal movie, but I enjoyed it and I have watched it since and I have enjoyed it. This movie, nah, man, I, I don't enjoy this. I don't think I could ever enjoy this. Uh, I don't even know that I would consider this torture porn. It's it's more of just yeah, it's just stuff I don't I don't want to see. You know what I mean? I just don't want to see it. So not to belabor this one that much because I got to go into the second one. But that's the first Human Centipede, and uh, yeah, this was wow, this was weird, man. That brings us to the second Human Centipede. I have not written my review for this one yet, and so you're going to hear pretty much what I'm going to put, I think. When you create something that is as despicable as the first movie, it's kind of vile, it's borderline tolerable, the only thing you can do is up the ante and dial it up to 11 or 12 or 15 or whatever the dial will go to. And that's what the Human Centipede 2 does. So in the first movie, you've got a doctor that decides he, for whatever reason, he's going to join some people together and they're going to be one big feeding tube for each other. Okay. The second movie treats the first movie as a movie. And you've got this main guy in here who was very well cast. I like this guy for a villain. He's got some mental disability. He's very quiet, never speaks, uh, hardly ever grunts, moans. Very little noise comes out of this guy at all. He is one of the creepiest people I think I have ever seen in a film that just makes you... Mm, yeah, one of those. Uh, so at any rate, 
the first movie is a movie in this movie. And this guy watches it and just absolutely loves the thing. And he's watching it constantly. He's got his little notebook with all kinds of pictures and diagrams and things. He's like a total fan of that first movie. Loves centipedes. And he's got it in his head that he wants to make a 12-person centipede. So next thing you know, he starts clocking people with a crowbar across the head and taking them into this uh, warehouse and just tying them up and dumping them off. I don't know how many days this took place over. It seemed like it, maybe a week at the most. Uh, it was definitely more than one day because he would be at home and then he would come back to work. I have questions though, because this guy's like a security guard at a uh, car park and people are disappearing, but nobody seems to connect the dots. I mean, there was forgetting all that. Um, this movie was brutal to get through. Now I mentioned in talking about the first movie that this one was only got a 1.8 star rating on Letterboxd. This is not Rotten Tomatoes. This is not IMDb. This is Letterboxd. Uh, I have not looked at where else it is. Letterboxd is kind of my go-to for um, rating movies, reading reviews and stuff because you you get into the community there and you see what other people rate things and you, you can kind of judge where a film is going to be in your taste by how the other people have rated things. If you get... You follow people, you get followers, you kind of see where people stand on things. And that this has a, such a low score, I'm going to guess um, the few people that did watch this definitely didn't care for it. You know what I mean? This is not a bad movie. And I don't mean bad as in content. I mean bad as in quality. Where the first movie, I gave the first movie a three star. I'm going to give this four stars out of five. And to qualify that, I don't necessarily think that this is, this is not a great movie, uh, especially with the content, but this movie definitely, it's horrifying. It is revolting. It is vile. It is far more a step above and beyond that first movie. It is, a very extremely effective horror film and it does its job extremely well. <laughs> this is the first one was filmed in black and or the first, the first film was a color film. This film is black and white. And I think that style choice worked extremely well here. There is, a, a very disturbing sense about this whole thing. I mean, this is like super disturbing and being in black and white kind of rolled some of that off a little bit, but yet made it more grimy and dirty. Like there's various bodily fluids all over the place, but in black and white, you don't have to distinguish between the various colors. There's no rainbow palette here. Um, with black and white, you can show certain things without showing them. And there's a lot of this that's cut away. Like you don't see, you don't see as much violence as you perceive. There is a lot of violence shown. Don't get me wrong. This dude, where the first movie was very clinical and surgical and clean, it was vile and disgusting, but it was clean. Like the doctor was uh, injecting people with, with something to put them to sleep. He was doing things more humanely. This guy, when he finally goes off, he's just pulling teeth and doing things with no anesthesia. He basically clocks people on the head until they're out, and then he can go do his job. So there's no anesthesia at all on any of this. It's very brutal because he's using like a, a staple gun and a, a butcher's knife and, and just random tools that he had around the house. So it, it looked great. Uh, the, the sound was, was definitely spot on. I mean, you got every little thing that you didn't want to hear was there visually. It was very appealing. 
uh, as far as the camera angles and the way the shot was done and the way the the lighting and everything was done in the black and white there was times where the lights were flickering and you couldn't really see what was going on but you it would flicker down enough to where you could see and then it would flick back on and you could definitely see and i love the ambience of the whole thing i love the uh the sounds of everything the movie's just oh my god it is so brutal to watch though there are things in this movie that I, again, I am not into this kind of movie. This is not my thing in any way, shape, or form. Um, I would not say this was entertaining. I would not say this was fun. I would say this is something I will never revisit. I would be glad if I never saw this in the first place. But I have to acknowledge that the movie is decently made. And the cast was really well in this they did a great job selling this concept again the way the concept worked in the first one this was elevated again and and sold now i haven't seen the third one yet um i wanted to stop and make this video because i figured this was going to get long if you have sat through all this i do not recommend either of these movies i recommend nobody watch these things uh even though i've scored them fairly highly I, I can't, these are not movies I would ever say go watch. Uh, a movie like Terrifier, which is extremely violent, it's it's very gory. I like it. I thought it was funny. You know, I thought it was a fun movie. Uh, it's brutal. It uses a lot of the same words. It's vile. It's but it's a movie I found entertaining. Where this movie is just oh my god, no, you know. So, I don't know, man. These I, I'm not looking forward to the third one. I am really not looking forward to that. And I've got Tusk in there too, which I'm really questioning life decisions at this point. But at any rate, that's the Human Centipede movies. Boy, I just don't watch them. Just don't, don't, don't. I don't recommend it at all at all not even on a dare not even on a challenge just don't bother they're not worth it go watch something better spend your time doing something else at any rate i uh, hope you enjoyed this and that's all we're going to talk about with this one take care